I'm well, I'm really well. How are you doing? Good. I got to pick up fish this afternoon. Right on. Right on. That's great. Where, where are you picking up? I pick up a famous foods. You are costing me a fortune, my dear. <laughs> a freaking fortune. Are you, and it's, you know what now? And, and my mom is, hopefully it doesn't listen to the YouTube channel. My mom's pretty frugal, right? Yeah. My mom is all over this. Oh, I'm so pleased. Yeah. So she's going to get it delivered, I think, to Famous as well. Because she'll go in and buy some of her dried, you know, the, like her lentils and stuff. Yeah. But I don't think they believed it. And I told them, I said, Ma, I'm telling you, like, first off, the house, I'm, I'm doing this because Phil can't get the fish yet. So this is awesome. Right? Yeah. yeah, we were just talking about that. Yeah, exactly. we were just talking about it's that. Soon, mm -hmm. soon. <laughs> it's so good. But, you know, it, it's like I've, people need to really understand. First off, it's, it's just really cool. I mean, we know you, I love what you do. I know you know that. Yeah, I, I love the pictures. I love the little story on the package. I shit you not. It's amazing how much different the fish tastes. Like it's it's not even night and day. Yeah. It is truly. And, you know, if okay, you know, if you go to any grocer, mass grocer, and you bring home like pink salmon, for example, mm -hmm. first off, pink salmon on a good day is interesting uh, fish to cook, right? Should be really done pretty quick. Yeah. But you get it home and the house smells of fish. This stuff. Even Daniel comes and goes, Dad, man. He goes, I, I know you did fish tonight, but he goes, this actually smells really nice. It's nice. totally different. Yeah, it should. It should smell like beautiful and delicious and yeah, like a fresh fishy. ocean breeze. It shouldn't taste smell fishy. I always say that if it smells fishy or it tastes fishy, that's because it's it's rancid. It's going off. It's not good. But welcome to what you get in grocery. I mean, what yeah, are you going to do? Yeah. And it's hard because, again, <clears throat> you know, as opposed to everybody running around yelling at bad fishing practices, bad farming practices, whatever you want to yell at these days, when you, when you buy it this way and, and you truly buy something that someone gives a shit about taking out of the ocean or off the land or out of the land or whatever and packages and processes it properly and quickly, and then you get it quickly, yeah. mamma mia, what a different world. Right. Oh, I'm so well, glad. Actually. That's what you're getting to is a virtual. You got a real hug in two weeks when I see you because the fish has been amazing. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. That's wonderful. Oh, I look forward to the real hug in two weeks when I see you. That's going to be great fun. That's amazing. Um, so today we, uh, so you're speaking at Food Pro coming up. That's right. And so we, we wanted to, uh, well, one, we had an excuse to talk to you, which is amazing. Um, Kenny gets a chance to rant and rave about Skipper right. Otter, uh, but but um, I guess we we wanted to make sure that like people who are going or thinking about going to Food Pro get a chance to kind of meet you, um, kind of you know get Kenny's rant, um, and then also but um, you know anything you want to tell us about what you might want to do at Food Pro? Like I don't know if you guys have all set your topics or whatever, but. I think just you know giving that extra context because I think so I'm not too sure. I don't know. think it's sold out yet, and I don't think people. I don't think sometimes people really clue in. This is why I think this is important to do. First off, I don't yeah. think people really. They'll read a name, and they'll look at Fisher Auto, and they'll That's think, right. okay, what the hell is Fisher Auto? Yeah, I mean, yeah, but yeah, sounds maybe cool. I don't know Ooh. if it's worth a ticket, yeah. or they'll right. see you know the piece by chocolate and think, oh yeah, it was a nice movie, but I don't know. If they see you guys before, I, I think it changes everything. I think that it sells tickets, hundred percent. Mm -hmm. You definitely will be well worth seeing, and people will be signing up for <laughs> Fisher Auto Man. Yeah. I'm gonna make people sign up. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I'm not getting baby. a commission, everybody. I'm not paying this guy. <laughs> I don't want anything. I just want my fish to come the way it does. That's it. That's great. That's great. Well, I'm looking forward to it too. And I, I think you're right. I think there's so many conferences. I mean, we sort of look through lists of people. We're like, oh, it could be good, but I'm so busy. You know, like yeah, I'm, we're all busy. That's just the thing. Yeah. We're all busy all the time, right? But I think there's some real value to like pulling ourselves up out of the day-to-day -day grind of what we do and just pausing and remembering why we do what we do, right. what lights us up and getting inspired uh, by right. different speakers. Like that's why we go to things like this. And, th and that's why I'm really excited. Like I love hearing other pe other speakers' stories and you know uh, what inspired them and why they do what they do and learning from their lessons. And I always come away, I came away from Food, Food Pro last year and I was just lit up. Like I just had a list of people to follow up with and great contacts and I was all the more inspired. And we met there. Um, yeah. You know, like there's just been so many great relationships that have come out of it. So oh, I, just I love it. I love, I love it. it. Yeah. 
So, I mean, I'm going to probably, I was thinking about it and I was thinking about making this kind of really personal, like really sharing my personal story about how I got started and why I do what I do. And mm. yeah, well, I love that. Yeah. You know, cause I think, you know, rather than it just being a sort of like formulaic, I don't know, talk, I just want to like, let's just be really real people here and talk about how we get into the things that we do and how we make the decisions that we make. And I, and I, I people tend to say they like that story. They like hearing personal stories that aren't just kind of, you know, formulas. like, I think that's why we do the podcast the way we do and why we love yeah. having people like you on is that is the business story is always cool, right? I mean, these are business type. This is a business podcast for the most part. This is a business event. We're going to, I, I get all that. We all know where we're doing business. We're like, okay, who cares? Like there are people behind the businesses. And I think that, you know, if you've got 200 people in the audience and three people are on the fence because they're not too sure if they should do this. And then they hear someone like you or like us or like the, the other people there and say, well, shit, they did it. And they were talking about the same yeah. thing that I'm doing. They're just as scared as I was, or I am. Yeah. Well, I mean, maybe I can try Or you know what? She seems really nice and personable. You know what? Maybe I'll just go grab her and ask if I could just talk to her for five minutes. Yes. And that might be just enough to push someone, hopefully not off the edge because our industry can be interesting on a good day, but it would just give them a push to say, yeah, you, you know what? Be cautious, but you, yeah, you can do this. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You know, I was just telling Phil last night with the BC Business Magazine Awards night, the Women of the Year Awards. And so I was at this awards uh, event and talking with lots of other entrepreneurs at different stages, right? Some of us have been doing this for a while, some people are just starting out. And that was exactly the topic that came up, which is like, you know, when you're starting out and you're or you're in startup, we all know what that's like. Like you're just treading water and you ask yourself right. every day, like, am I crazy? Like, is there ever an end game to this? Or am right. I just going to live in this like chaotic, stressful time starting up a food business? Or is there some, you know, what does it look like? at the end of this tunnel. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And these a couple of young women I was talking to and, you know, I was telling them about like, yeah, I remember. I remember when I, you know, was lucky enough to get into some like mentorship programs and try to kind of help get the business off the ground. And, and those now looking back, I have the luxury of that hindsight to say, yeah, like, those were the moments that really advanced the business and going to things and meeting people and picking people's brains. And, you know, like these things all added up to kind of where we are now, which is like, we're a stable food business. that's an impact, big social environmental impact right. business and doing great things. And when I look back, um, it was having a community. It was having people around me who could say, you're going, you're doing great work. And yeah, here's a couple of tips. And oh, I remember when we made that huge mistake. Don't yeah. make that mistake. You know, it was yeah. all these little pieces that kind of cumulatively brought us to kind of where we are now. And I, I think it's so important that we connect with each other and share stories, right? I love it. If you're doing that, I think it's going to be fabulous. Yeah. I think you will inspire. Um, I think you'll inspire people more than what you probably think you will. Um, because you are, I mean, your story is interesting. You're interesting you've got such a lovely disposition. I mean, it's, it's just, it's, there's no, there's no loss in this for someone in an audience listening. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. But you might inspire yourself to say, yeah, you know what? I, I think I'm going to, I'm yeah. going to do it. She's telling me I can do this. I'm, I'm going to do it too. Yeah. And I think there's things that like, whether people in the audience are starting up a business or they work for, you know, a big corporation or maybe yeah. they're in banking and they're not even working in kind of like the food space, but they're peripheral to it. I think that there are stories uh, like there's there's elements of my story that apply to everybody, I think. And it yeah. really has to do with like, um, you know, for me, it's really about starting with what is the change that I want to make in the world? And what can I do in the situation that I'm in right now to be part of a solution, not part of a problem? And mm -hmm. I think some of those things, the tools and techniques and things that I've developed over the years, I think can be applied to any business or any anybody anybody's role just, these are just self-analysis tools like how do i look at where i am right now how do i be in choice and conscious choice about the impact that i want to have around me and and so i'm hoping that some of those elements of my story will be at least inspiring if not you know give somebody not you know not necessarily everybody's going to go out and start a business but you know i hope that they'll take that and be like yeah you know what i have an opportunity i have a connection i have a thing that i can do i somebody i can support um you know it's, it's just it's connection i think when we connect in a real way with people 
uh, it lights us all up. We're humans. That's part yeah. of being human, right? No. I like it. Oh my gosh, I think I you might it. even inspire other mentors, like because yeah. you're you're mentoring now in a lot of large part. Yeah. Maybe maybe other people think that sit there and think, well, you know what, shit, maybe I should do this too. Maybe you know a little help here and there to someone just starting or getting going or not too sure if they should or could. You know, sometimes this it doesn't require days. It might just it could be a fifteen minute call. Exactly. Like seriously, right? Yeah, and Love I still it. have situations where people come back and say, remember that time I called you once and you talked, told me this? And I'm like, I don't quite remember that. But it obviously stuck with them, you know? And that's the thing. We don't really know how we're going to influence the world and people around us. We don't really know. And sometimes no. we never find out. But when we kind of put ourselves out there uh, and we put good out into the world, then, you know, it's, it's, it's exciting to see how it comes back to us. Right? You, like, I don't know if you... And, and maybe it's it, it's a nothing, but but for us it was a something. So we met you, and you're probably the star. Uh, you know, because Kenny and I, had, we kind of we were wandering around the environmental hinterland trying to figure out how to make heads or tails of this thing, right? Like very regular, kind of follow the crowd sort of consumers from that perspective. And then after talking to you, we, we really. You know, we've we've tried our best to to work in um, folks that are doing regenerative farming. Who have you know started thinking about agriculture differently? Um, aquaculture. We, we we brought on uh, Daniel, who's an aquaculturist. Didn't even know that was a thing. Do you know like? Yeah. And so, yeah. The, you know, if if anything, even the podcast is is living proof that that as you put yourself out there, it changes things. Like so, for us, that has changed, right? We've looked at, you know, we we've picked businesses that have come on, you know, that have walked away from all sorts of you know, like kind of really cool careers to farm and do things differently that, you know, we might never have, have picked before, right? Because we didn't really appreciate what that was. Well, right? I choose so, I choose to support yeah. you and your and your group because of the story. Yeah. And then because, okay, I mean, I may not do a lot of good on any given day, right? I'm probably, I'm sure, an environmental disaster to the extreme. But if I can just do little bits here and there and you inspire me to do that, I mean, you might be killing my bank book, but it's okay. <laughs> You're making the house a lot happier, man. We are eating some freaking wicked fish. So quite frankly, it's worth every penny. But like, seriously, right? That doesn't come unless That's right. we have no, a no, but, 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 and then you but, but just think of me. Just think of when we start, I think it's in the recording, but we talk about you cooking fish at home. Yeah. And like, you know, Daniel coming through the door and kind of going, I know you cook fish, but it doesn't stink. Right? It doesn't stink. Like, it's like so silly. really? So many households, you know, like our household, right? Like we, we cook, we, when we can cook fish and then, but the minute we finish cooking fish, even if I like Chinese steam it, right? So kind of like probably the gentlest way to cook it. And um, my middle one will come through the door and go, well, like, I can't, I, I'll be outside. Like, can we air the place out? You know, because there's so, you know, but we don't know any different, right? Like, so, you know. That's all we kind of, have. I think that's amazing. That's exactly that's amazing. it. And if you don't know, I mean, that's the thing. We we need to have our eyes opened sometimes. Right. Yeah. I, and that's through connection. I think, you know, it's a thing. We live in a world now that is like, we all live in echo chambers. We all live in these bubbles and all of our like yeah. social media and all these things. We just hear the same thing that we've always heard. And we need to have our thinking challenged. Right. right? We just need to crack that open and say, yo, what if you could cook delicious, delicious fish? Yeah. Didn't make your house stink. And you were actually doing amazing right social thing. environmental work by eating that fish. Like, what if that was possible? I think when we can open people's minds to those kinds of possibilities, then it's a win for everybody. I think so too. And I think, you know, and it, then it pushes maybe someone who's going to do it in agriculture, which they do, or in the raising of animal for food, which, you know, if you're not vegan, we still yeah. like that side. And if you're vegan, we get better farming practices. I don't care where it yeah. comes from. Yeah. But every little bit of good just, you know, compounds and multiplies. That's how we'll get, hopefully, you know, fix this mess that we've seemed to have created. Yeah, that's exactly it. The crises of our times aren't going to be solved by all of us just doing more of the same. What got us no. here isn't going to get us out of this mess. So we've all 100%. got to be thinking differently. Right? 100%. Okay, so um, Sonia Strabell is going to be at Food Pro 24. If so I think you haven't got a ticket, 
I don't know why you're still waiting. You should go get a ticket. She's going to be there. She's going to be speaking. You're going to hear her wicked story. And Kenny's going to make you buy her fish. Um, 100%. So I just don't see 100%. how that sounds fine. So um, go sign up tickets and, and Sonia is going to be there. Can't wait. I can't wait for the story. I want to hear it again. I'm excited to have you out there. I think it's going to be fantastic. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks for having me on, you guys. It's always yeah. great. It's super fun to talk to you. Food Pro is going to be awesome because it's going to be this live in 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 the flesh and, and it's going to be super fun. Yeah, it's going to be, be amazing.